Hi, welcome to this uh, topic. This is uh, about the measurement process. Um, I'll, I'll be reasonably brief, but it's still going to be a uh, comparatively long um, uh, video. Uh, this is because it's kind of difficult to uh, deal with the, the whole of a, soft, of, uh, a measurement process um, when there are you know, books and volumes devoted to it. So let's have a go. The things to think about uh, with this is um, you, you may well think, well, surely it's not so hard that I need a complete process to deal with it. Um, it is. Uh, it's, it's not that difficult, but it's easy to get it wrong. Uh, do I have to do all that? Uh, the short answer is until you really know what you're doing, yes. Um, now the reason for this is that data is expensive to gather it all and in addition um, it's quite frequent you get one shot at it right you gather the data and if it turns out you've gathered a whole lot of useless data that's it you've blown it so it pays to get it right now aside from um, your measurement instrument and your measurement scale which you should have got sorted out there are some things in the measurement process itself, that is the data gathering and storing, that can just render your your um, your data useless. So now there is a measurement process, and you can see it there. And this again is taken from ISO 15939. Um, it uh, we deliberately set out to say, well, we we better. Uh, take the view that organizations don't have measurement and they want to establish it first and, and uh, put up all the machinery and then start doing measurement. So there is a bit within the box um, that is uh, dealing with, a certain amount of it is dealing with um, establishing the measurement um, infrastructure and that personnel and all that sort of stuff. And then the rest of it is um, plan, do, check, act. So plan what you're going to measure, go measure it, uh, check whether you've got any errors or, or faults in your measurement um, program and um, improve it. Now, with research projects, it's once through. Do uh, you plan, you measure, if you've got it wrong, you probably can't go back and repeat it. So, planning the measurement. Now this consists of a few things, um, like planning anything, well let's start with, with the end in mind. What is it you want to achieve? What information do you need? What, are you, what is it you're trying to prove? So identify the information needs and then select the measures that you are going to use to, um, to uh, I don't know, indicate that, that information need. Um, and that's useful. All right. Define the, the uh, data collection, analysis, and reporting procedures. Now, a lot of PhD students do not do this. And as a consequence, they come around to doing the analysis and find they've got the wrong data. And they're trying to, they're trying to do a correlation, and they've got something in which they really can't do correlation uh, because they just didn't think about it. Or they're trying to combine things, and it just it isn't working. Uh, define the criteria for evaluating the information products in the measurement process. Now, again, in your research, one of the things that you're going to have to do, uh, I guess, after the event, is you're going to have to defend your data. Why should people believe that this data is valid? Well, if you plan up front how you're going to evaluate your measurement instrument and your measurement and your data collection, you're in a really good chance, in a really good position to defend this. If you don't, you're scrambling after the event, and that's invariably not good. You review, review and uh, find the resources you need for the measurement tasks. Um, uh, sometimes that's easy, it's just you with whatever you're doing, and sometimes it's not. Um, but anyway, again, think about it beforehand. If you're going to do a uh, survey and going to engage various people to do the survey, you have to ensure that all the different people understand the same things and they're going to ask the same things and collect the data in the same fashion. Otherwise, you've got some bias in there. 
and acquire and deploy the supporting technologies. I think that's easy. Uh, well, it depends what you want to do. Uh, have you got your data analysis software installed and is it working? So let's, let's have a look at the data collection, analysis and reporting procedures. Now with the data collection procedures, should specify how the data are to be collected as well as how and where they will be stored. Normally, this would be simply your experiment or your interviews, uh, etc. Now I know that um, in, the, the, in the case of this university, uh, anybody who's going to be doing um, research that involves humans is probably going to have to do an ethics application. And there, in the ethics application, it wants to know what are you going to do with the data? Because we can't have personal data running around the place, we need to know what's going to happen to it. So that's one place where it's required. If you're not going through an ethics approval, well, uh, it's up to you or your supervisor to decide how you're going to store your data. And I repeat, data is expensive. You don't want to store it somewhere where it can be wiped or corrupted. So let's, let's just think about where we're going to store it, how we're going to store it, and back it up. Decide how you will analyze the data. Okay. Do you need a Pearson correlation? If you do, I mean, I, I, do you have to, to, to show um, a fairly strong correlation? Well, if you do, you're going to have to collect interval or ratio data, and you're going to have to collect quite a lot of it. Right. This, this changes how you're doing it. Are you able to collect quite a lot of it? Um, if you can only collect ordinal uh, information, uh, how many, how much of it do you need to, to collect? Now there are some some uh, research projects where, um, in order to get the number of occurrences in the various um, uh, various categories and various uh, orders, you're probably going to have to collect quite a lot, and this can be a problem. So this is something to think about before you start, not when you're halfway through. So think seriously about what tests you want to do and therefore what type of measurement scale to use. And uh, as I said before, decide where the data is going to be stored. And store it somewhere um, where it's uh, not likely to be corrupted or um, disclosed when you don't want it disclosed. Next thing to do is to define the criteria for evaluating the information products and the measurement process. So. How are you going to know the data are valid? And how will you know that you've collected valid data? And how will you know that it's going to be safe? So the evaluation will allow one to determine whether the data are needed that are needed have been collected and analyzed with sufficient quality to assure the information needs. And you think, well, yeah, of course. Um, you would be surprised with surveys particularly how many strange answers you can get to fairly simple, straightforward questions. And uh, one of the uh, examples I can think of was, um, it came up during a particular research project that somebody was presenting on information that was recorded on medical records, and somebody was going to do some analysis of that. And some of the uh, information recorded would, would um, have you believe that a woman had been pregnant 105 times or that a 105 year old woman had been pregnant or something of that nature and you think um, maybe maybe it's not quite valid um, so you need to have a look at that what is the criteria for accepting a measure as valid and um, how are you going to deal with it the criteria need to be defined at the beginning of the project um, in order to be um, useful. Now, I guess in many ways that's not strictly true. It's fairly difficult to anticipate all of the things that can cruel your data. So although you should uh, think about uh, what, what the um, validity criteria for data are at the front, you can't always anticipate everything and you may get through the, your, your um, data collection and find out uh, this one is not valid. Uh, so having planned it all, now you've got to go and do it. Uh, this 
this way you get into um, uh, uh, internal validity problems. Um, is the way in which you collected the data valid? Uh, is the way in which you collected the data bias your data or, or corrupt your data in some fashion? So uh, internal validity matters a great deal. The activity consists of, um, informally in, in the standard for example, um, the activity consists of integrating your measurement um, pro uh, methods, techniques, into usually some established uh, process for doing something else. So this is, this is the case if you're introducing a measurement program into an organization, it has to fit in with their business processes. Now in the case of um, research, it's likely that you're going to collect the data yourself and you're not, you're not actually fitting it into any other established process. But you might be, you never know. Go collect the data. Right, you've got your instrument, you, you, uh, you've got your method of collecting the data, now go do it. Collect the data, uh, store it somewhere um, where, where you intend to store it, analyze the data and develop your information products and communicate the results. So that's the, the actual, you planned it, now you've done it. Analyzing the data and uh, developing the information products. You know, this is this is what you came here for. You collect the data not because you wanted to collect the data, but you collected the data because you wanted to prove something or uh, yeah, show something or whatever it is. The data may be aggregated, transformed, normalized, recoded prior to analysis. This you can do. During this task, data are processed to produce the planned indicators. Now, that uh, process uh, can um, you can make you, you can get it wrong, um, but if you plan through the methods of analysis and the aggregations and, and the combinations that you're going to do, then that should be okay. All right. So you, you combine the data and you're, you're distilling information out of it. Interpret the analysis into findings, then conclusions. So having got your data, what does it all mean? And this is part of the measurement process. The measurement analyst should be able to draw some initial conclusions based on the results. And the last step is to review your findings and conclusions. The review is intended to ensure the analysis was performed and interpreted properly and the information, information needs were satisfied. Again, for um, if you're doing PhD research, then um, what you're doing there is uh, reviewing, did you get it all right? Can the results be believed? And this is particularly important if what you found contradicts some world figure, or if you found is counterintuitive or you know surprising in some fashion, and, and this can happen. So it's good if you've got all your um, uh, supporting evidence to say that you you, you did it correctly, and you, it's a valid result, and it's believable. Now, just by way of summary, the measurement process is shown there again, where uh, it's basically the planning check act. You plan, you plan the measurement, you perform the measurement, uh, you review the measurement, and you make changes to your um, your uh, planning and measurement process. Um, on the one research project, you're probably not going to do that. But if you're going to be a researcher, you should learn from uh, your experience and improve as time goes by. So in summary then, select the measures to provide the information needs for decision making. Uh, so figure out what it is you want to decide and go and select the measures you need to provide that information so you can make that decision. Measurement models relate measurement data to information needs. So we talk about the measurement instrument. There is a measurement process that will help ensure the measurement quality. Um, you may not have to do it all, but you're strongly advised to think about it all. Measurement works best when it's considered a significant and integral part of management. Now that advice probably applies more to companies than to research, but it's still, it's still uh, well advised. Measurement is an integral part of your research. 
and he pays to get it right.